Hey everybody, Texas Stroke here, Lance's Performer Shop, LoneStarMoneFire.com. We are back for the Ram Revival. Uh, we've been working on the top end, kind of getting the uh, fuel system, fuel delivery taken care of. Gonna kind of stick in that general area. We're gonna try something out here that is going to involve this. <laughs> and uh, It's kind of gonna be a crapshoot. I think it should work. Not sure how well. Uh, but this comes from R&M Specialties. They're sort of a specialist in this one particular area, which is spark plug routing, right? <laughs> and the catch is the 408 Magnum is based, of course, on the 5.9 Magnum. The 5.2, 5.9 Magnum, 318, 360, very, very closely related to the 318 and 360 LA motors. However, one key improvement, if you will, was in the valve cover, the ceiling. Uh, classic LA style, you've got uh, three bolts, I believe, on the bottom, if I'm thinking correctly, you know, corner, corner, and middle uh, on your valve covers. And then on the top side, you sort of take that and divide it by two, you know, so where you've got the middle and the outer, you have the halfway points up here. So essentially, five bolts seal your valve cover to the head. Now, of course, you know, some small block Mopars tended to leak, and one of the upgrades that the engineers made as they progressed from the LA to the Magnum platform was doubling your sealing capability, going from five bolts, spaced as I described, to ten bolts, equally spread, five across the top, five across the bottom. So, R&M does not make anything for the Magnum. I had contacted them and they were actually going to send me out like a prototyping kit and apparently they did send it out like I never got it and uh, they apparently I finally like touched base with them as I got closer like needing it and I was like hey you know I just wondered if y'all had ever sent this out and I uh, heard back from them you know a day or so later and it turns out apparently they did send it I have no idea where it is I don't have it but what I was going to do for them is sort of you know say Put your you know tabs here 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 and here and this will be perfect for anyone that's working with a magnum a lot of times keep in mind you know people take you know old school you know 318 or 360 put magnum heads on it or magnum based heads and uh, kind of work in that you know sort of combination fashion if you will and of course anyone with a straight up magnum uh, this would sort of be a cool thing because you got to think it's not just, you know, your second gen Rams and Dakotas and everything. There's also a lot of people, you know, that back in, say, the 90s, early 2000s, pre-Hemi stuff, swapped a Magnum into, you know, their A, B, or E body. So, uh, it wouldn't be the biggest seller in the world, but I think it would have a decent footprint. Obviously, they must have thought similar things, or they wouldn't have been going to send out a prototyping kit. This should be fine. Again, basically, you know, it's like... I'll show you the spacing in a second, but we're going to see, and then maybe, you know, we get the kit from them and we dial this in. If that's the case, I'll pull this. Got lots of small block Mopars running around. Uh, we can make use of it, especially since it's black. But I should tell you, you can do these in a host of colors. Uh, you essentially have almost any anodized color under the rainbow. And then these little uh, spacers here for your spark plug wires, the dividers, they are also available in a host of colors. So you can sort of have black and blue, blue and blue, red and blue, you know, whatever you want to do. And, you know, if you want it to be discreet, if you want to draw attention to it, you pick your poison. Yeah, you can set it up however you would like. Purple and yellow, for example, if you're building a Barney or something. Uh, I guess he would be green, but, you know, whatever. Maybe, right? Wouldn't he green? I don't know, but you get what I'm saying. So, the other thing that's critical here, you've got two options. You can do vertical or you can do horizontal. If you look up here at this valve cover, this would be vertical. It sort of runs, you know, parallel with your valve cover. If you do horizontal, you're going to take that and you're going to be going from straight upright to straight out, you know, 180 above your headers or exhaust manifold. So different strokes for different folks. You got two key options, vertical, horizontal, plus the myriad of colors. Now, with the 5.2, you know, still being, you know, a pretty low mile functioning engine, you know, wanting to keep it intact, um, not long prior to the water pump and freeze plugs going, I had actually swapped uh, plugs, plug wires, I should say, plugs and plug wires. And so plugs, of course, still in the motor, but the plug wires, uh, when I just, it's one of those things, you know, started using Taylor Spyro Pro, that's what I stick with, right? And uh, whether it's, you know, old school small block, 
old school big block or even modern stuff i just i run taylor spyro pros so the problem is 2001 ram off-road even though it's not like you know an ancient addition to the truck here's what we got <laughs> and, uh, i'll just throw a couple of these down i think this is all of them you get the idea probably from this picture you know they're like well you know that looks nice well does it <laughs> parts of it does so let's just grab this wire for example i think i had marked these no i did not yes i did yes i did okay not crazy i thought i'd written on the head but i guess i didn't but like right here this would be your plug side don't know that you can see that super well now you can that's your tailor right and then five that's me that's me saying that this is the number five plug wire <laughs> and, uh, this is not this was not a universal deal this was not you know like me buying a giant spool and building them which realistically you get the best fit possible doing that and for things like this where taylor might be not taking into account a guy doing something weird like this loom keep that in mind you know if you just buy it on a spool and you build your own plug wires it's perfect exactly to your specs this however is one of the many kits they offer of course being for magnum based la uh, magnum based uh, 5.2 5.9 i should say that said kind of dirty right you know we got some got some dirt got some grime and uh, we got grease if any of these i don't think we've burned anything uh so that's good but i mean look at this boot side and uh, you get the idea they're not pristine they're not beautiful and uh, even if i clean these up and they don't work like maybe we go full tilt and they send me out the kit and they mock them up and a couple months later we get like the dedicated magnum based one which would be sweet if for some reason these plug wires don't work not a big deal i'll build my own and most importantly i can throw these back on the 5.2 and I know they work there, and we're home free. Plus, I would want them clean there anyway. So what I'm going to do is lay these out, get like a ooh, dramatic before for you, right? And uh, better not get my Knipex handles dirty over there, but uh, let's zoom back out. Oh, we are. We are. Look at that. Those are my dedicated AN pliers wrenching in. I want to keep those nice and clean. So uh, it's a clean job doing that, you know, not a dirty job. So might move some of that stuff out of the way and I'm going to lay these out, get you kind of a, a dirty before, and then I'm just going to go to town. Typically, you know, in the past I would use WD-40. Uh, sometimes, like if I've got like a cleaner degreaser around, I'll just shoot that. <laughs> and uh, Right now what I'm actually going to use is this stuff. Uh, it smells like pina colada and I hate it. <laughs> so I'm just going to shoot that and see how it cleans up if I'm not happy with it or I'm having to put in too much elbow grease no big deal uh, I'll just adjust accordingly but uh, that said I'm going to shut up and get these laid out get you to look at them and then just start cleaning them and uh, then we'll play around with that cool thing. and just like that the magic of organization we've got at the bottom your longest which is not number one it's the coil in this case right a lot of you probably think an old school Mopar magnums we got the coils way up on the front accessory bracket so we got coil and then we go kind of ascending one through eight so obviously you go from the front side of the block all the way to the back side they get shorter <laughs> so we got our long stuff up front got this short stuff in the back let's get this uh lanyard off for you but check it out not not the cleanest things right so this is your dramatic nasty before uh, that way you know the video seems worth your time you get to see them all cleaned up but basically i use a blue shop rag i shoot my cleaner on it i wipe it down and uh you know for some reason these don't clean up good i think on the little amount we've invested in the 408 to this point in time we'll just pick up a new set you know or maybe i'll just you know buy a spool and uh see what i can do but uh, we'll clean these up, see how they work with the loom, and uh, you shall see some significantly better looking plug wires here very, very soon. Alright, and here we are a little bit later, and we have got them cleaned up. Are they perfect? No. Are they significantly better? Oh yeah. So, uh, like I said, the next step, we're going to try to mock up our R&M uh, specialty uh, wire separator holder, whatever you want to call it. And we will see if these will actually function with that. Uh, granted, that's not ideal for the Magnum, because we of course have you know an extra two bolts on the bottom rail where that would bolt therefore you know it's not going to be 
situated ideally should be functional but we just need to see if we have the length necessary with this kit from taylor so uh, like i said these have been on the truck for quite some time i've cleaned them several times and uh, this is just yet another cleaning as mentioned worst case scenario if these do not work uh, we'll just put them back on the 5.2 but uh, there they are cleaned up like i said they'd be so it's uh, used primarily that pina colada crud and uh, then it was pretty tough grime up here right under uh, the boot where you would actually be at the distributor. Uh, it's odd how that seems to be dirtier than you know what's in the plug. Uh, granted the magnums do have heat shields maybe that keeps some of the crud out of there but I uh, had to use a little WD-40 down there but anyway they look significantly better. It is like 11:20 at night. I've got to got to get inside and <laughs> Uh, shower and do some things so uh, I'm gonna call it a night for now but like I said we'll be back out we'll start in on the uh, mock-up and see what we can do all right so stop to eat some uh, leftover pizza we're back out here and uh, we're going to hopefully get our R&M billet wire looms installed here so we can get these plug wires back off the table on the motor where they belong now as I mentioned we are sadly having to use one for a 360. I've test fitted it you know just in terms of like light mock-up it looks like everything's gonna be fine of course it should be uh, you just added an extra you know series of bolts you go from 5 to 10 from the LA to the magnum valve cover that said where this would be nice to have an additional runner would be on the passenger side and by doing that we would then have maybe you know a three hole or another two hole and they're even a standalone it kind of depends how they structured it but just for the coil wire that's kind of going to be the loose card we might have to like zip tie up or something but so uh, we've got everything kind of uh, out of the way here let me set that down tools we're going to have to grab the connections here in these uh, double blocks the allen screw it's going to be a 5 30 second that we need the nylock on the back side it is important to note it's a nylock that's going to require a 3 8 wrench you can kind of see our little sk back there uh the big slots here the five or i'm uh, so sorry the 3 16 is going to be for these bigger guys right here uh they're going to of course we can drive in with that and then to torque it down i'm going to have to use this it's my only uh, 316 socket cap it's going to be for a uh, 95 inch pounds I believe that's why I've got our Capri diamond torque wrench up there I've also got this right here a little Vera 38 socket because we're going to have to use it in tandem with our brand new Hazette 863 HPS <laughs> that's the one with the quick release uh, to actually take off what we have uh, from the machine shop so again it'll only be the back bolt and then the front one uh, these will structure left and right and yeah that's about all there is to it so uh, I guess I'm gonna get started taking those out luckily the machine shop is good and so it's just dry gaskets there's no silicone or anything so part of me hates having to take it out you know when it seals good but at the same time how else am I going to route the wires right so this kind of becomes important we don't want them burning all the time so uh, with that said I'm going to can it and get to work and see what we wind up with all right so here we are back at the 408 and we've got our R&M built wire loom if you can see it's going to line up just fine again these are basically four and a half inch you know center to center so what I'm saying is like if we could just extend this across the whole way number one that would be nice you could run like a uniform fastener in my opinion you know just have a blank every time the other thing though is here at the end that you don't even see way over there that corner bolt right at the edge of your screen if we could fit another thing right there and had a bracket we could actually then run our uh, you know coil wire through there so as is we may have to do some weird stuff you know like cable tied or something but brand new is that 863 hps with a long very extension and 3 8 socket these should be roughly 95 inch pounds so we're going to break them free beautiful and same thing up here and we'll do it that's what i was afraid of <laughs> but I've got these loose now. We'll just simply spin them out by hand. We'll mock this up, kind of set it all out, and see what we think of the layout. All right, so I've been over here playing around, trying to figure out the best way to do this. I started putting the rail on, and then I realized, like, hey, I'm going to need these clamps installed. 
as I started to install the back, you know, stack of four over here, I was like, you know, I don't think that's going to open wide enough for the spark plug wires to go in. These are kind of near the max edge of what it's capable of anyway. Ultimately, what I decided to do here, we're on what will be the passenger side, you know, the vehicles. So we have two, four, six, and eight. Two, four, six, eight, respectively. Eight towards the back in line with the distributor. I plug that sucker in eight, you know, just trying to like reverse route it that way. For some reason, I don't know if this valve cover, I've never really compared it to stock. It seems to be a little tighter than I remember. But uh, then I had eight plugged in. I actually had to bust out these Knipex spark plug wire pullers. Uh, it's just something with my thumb, like I don't get the grip I used to still. And luckily the pliers were there to save the day. But um, what I'm thinking, best course of action is to string these out again. I don't care how stupid it looks. I don't care if you use numbers. A uh, little, you know, wrap around tape like in a, you know, junction box. I don't care if you use something fancy, something sleeve, something custom. If you write on it with a sharpie like I do, just anything to identify your plug wires if they're not marked. And then hopefully you marked your distributor number one, which it should be if it's a factory cap or a good aftermarket one. And then of course you go around your firing order in case of a Chrysler V8, one eight four three six five seven two. So eight is going to be to the left typically right of your number one and then two will be to the right of it and if you get that backwards you just flip everything right at the distributor itself once these are plugged in you're good to go your changes will be made at the distributor so uh, that said i think it's best to go ahead and have all the wires ready to go here get the clamps around roughly in position barely clamp them if you can then assemble them to the rail, then probably tighten them, and then maybe put the rail on. So I'm not 100% sure. I'm just kind of winging it. Never installed one of these before. So I'm going to see if that works, and I'll be back to let you know. All right, so just as an example, I've kind of got this bolted up. And if you're running, you know, like maybe 7 millimeter, really thin stock stuff or something, this might work for you, just having it gated like this. With these Taylor Spyro Pros, we got a pretty fat end on the plug side, and you got like a traditional end on the distributor side. So what you would actually have to do, in my opinion, is keep this nested or have this saddle here, pinch the wires in, and you might even assemble it without the bracket, just, you know, finger tied on the nylocks there. Get that roughly in position. Again, you know, right here at the very end, this is going to be where your tall side of the bracket is. It's where you're also going to have all four wires. Put it roughly in position, maybe where you can like slide it about like an accordion. Then over here, you're going to have a midpoint. And then right here is your end of the bracket. Each of these will have a two slot capacity, right? So that's what we want to do again. I might see if we can get them to do a custom magnum one. It might just have like a little bit taller and maybe do like a 5-3-3 three, three type of a deal. I'm also the type where I flip this and you see these landings. I wouldn't mind having that be uniform, just go all five holes across. At least on the passenger side, I realize that it wouldn't mirror on the driver's side because we don't have a coil wire there. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I'll run all this by them and see what they think. And then if they send us out a new one, I guess we'll pull this off, have it for a small block, and have a Magnum specific one for the truck. But yeah, what I'm thinking is utilize the clamps, roughly position them, don't tighten anything so you can slide it on the wires a little bit, and then go to town. I think is going to be your best course of action. All right, so case in point, what I've sort of done here, I guess we need to back up just a tad. Roughly with the bracket held in place, I can mock these up. And what's important to note though is that these are not tight. See how I'm able to like slide that around? That way I can align it best with the bracket. That said, the bracket is here. It's obviously again going to mount here with spacers and everything. That said, getting into these points mounted is going to be difficult. So, what we will be doing is essentially getting the bracket tied in with these clamps before we secure it to the valve cover. Again, haven't ever installed one of these. That's what I'm thinking is going to turn out to be the best course of action. But this is what I was talking about. Just I even have the flat washers off, all but one of them. Uh, just because, again, the nylock's going to have to come off to go on here. The way these should orient, or at least in my opinion, you can do this. People change things up all the time. 
but in terms of aesthetic value, I like looking at the socket cap screw that is flushed and recessed as opposed to threads, a flat washer, and an eye lock. That's just not my thing. Some of you might be like, oh, it's so much easier with a nut here. For me, it's going to be better to have it this way because it looks best. So that's what I'm going to run with. But again, I'm going to painstakingly set this thing up and try to get everything locked in place. Don't tighten it yet. Just make sure it lines up good. And then we'll do the tightening of the clamps to the bracket and then we'll get the bracket itself installed. All right, so there it is roughly mocked up kind of in position for the test fit uh, to run these screws in and tighten them. You're going to need a 530 seconds hex key, which where's the sweet spot for this thing? I don't even know. Just trust me, 530 seconds. Backside for the nylock, a 3 8 wrench. So I'm going to go ahead and I guess is probably best to ensure you have the reach you need with the plugs plug them connect them to the spark plug make sure you've got the positive click and then tighten this stuff down before coming in with your spacers and trying to get the bracket bolted to the head rail the valve cover rail i should say so uh, essentially even though it's tempting to go ahead and tighten this down let's make sure we can connect to the plug wires and go to town my logic and for aesthetics again Top wire is number two because it goes the farthest, then four, then six, then eight. Again, shortest distance at the bottom, longest distance at the top. It just looks better aesthetically in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and plug those in, make sure everything's in position, tighten these clamps, and then we'll see if we can line up everything for the valve cover rail. All right, so there it is. Uh, we ran into a couple issues. Number one, I kind of thought the spacers were supposed to go under uh, the bracket at least, you know, sandwich it like one spacer under the bracket, one spacer above. There was not near enough uh, play in these plug wires to allow that to happen. It's also sort of tight. I'm pretty happy with it, you know, on two and four. Six is fine. Uh, where we have a little bit of pull is going to be on eight. Again, everything's actually okay. Uh, it's just not ideal, I guess, is the best way to put it. There's kind of another uh, vantage point for you. But uh, got these torqued to 95 inch pounds. The bracket still has a little bit of play in it uh, with the weight, which it isn't much. But it's something, you know, if I ever have like an oil leak develop, I'm kind of going to be suspicious of that. Now, when we go to the driver's side, I'm actually going to try to reuse these bolts down here because this doesn't look terrible. Uh, but it is not uniform either. Uh, the thing I like about it, since it is kind of pulling it tight here on the corner, with this being plastic, it serves as a little bit of an insulator uh, as opposed to being like straight on the valve cover or something in terms of absorbing heat. But yeah, it, uh, it went together. It's there. It holds our plug wires, which we didn't have accomplished earlier. Now, the only thing, like I keep telling you, we have that center plug on our distributor that's going to be our coil wire in the case of the magnum you know it's not like a deal like on a 440 where i might have a coil bracket here or you know like on the duster i've got it mounted on the firewall this would be great no issues there with the magnum which i guess we could relocate it uh but its factory location is going to be up here near the front accessories and that means that coil wire realistically would need to be like in a fifth slot here, a third slot here, a third slot here, and then a single slot here would just be perfect. Uh, so when I tell R&M about this, if they do wind up making one for Magnum, that would be my dream scenario, basically. But uh, yeah, it seems like it's going to work okay. So I'm going to hop over to the other side again. You can kind of see what I did here. We've got number one marked. And so we come in, we've got eight, four, three. Ew. That looks like a bee that just buzzed me. Uh, but we've got basically eight and then uh, four right beside it. We skip three. We've got six, five, and seven together. And then this guy right here on the other side of one is two. So that's where things stand right now. And I will leave it at that. We'll hop to the driver's side and knock it out. All right. So we're on the flip side of the engine stand. What will be the driver's side of the truck? As you can see, we've populated it with one, three, five, and seven. The center section there will be for the coil. Got the wires sort of pre-rounded here. Seven, five, three, and one. 
And we are ready now to remove two bolts from the valve cover. So coming in, it's the exact same setup mirrored as we have on the other side. So we're going to have the bracket here. We're going to need to remove bolts three and five or one and three, however you want to orient and orchestrate it. And when we do that again, this time around, I'm going to actually see if we can reuse uh, the bolts themselves, maybe kind of clean up the process since we couldn't run the spacers on the other side. If we can, we'll go back. We'll mirror that on that end. Uh, if we need to run the Allen bolt and spacers, we will do that. So uh, that said, we're going to do the exact same thing. I've got the clamps over here. I'm roughly going to position the four here, two here, and the other two, I think, about here where it would terminate. And uh, then we won't tighten those down. We'll just have them loosely in place. We'll then plug the wires in. Then we'll get the bracket on, and then we'll go about getting everything on the valve rail. So uh, give me a few minutes, and we will be right back. All right, so here we are. You might notice something a little different if you've got a trained eye, and that would be we retained uh, the valve cover bolts that we had before the r and wire looms. Now, reason for that, one, we had access to it, and number two, the spacers on these again this side here five and seven look at all this extra slack there is there uh, we have plenty of room to raise it up on this side however then here where we would have this you know third center bolt you know that would need the spacers as well to elevate the bracket we don't have near enough stretch from the number three cylinders wire so it needs to sit flat like that that means we would have had to run both spacers on top Subsequently, I just went ahead and used what we had, torqued it to 95, it's technically, due to my torque wrench limitations, 94.5. So, uh, that's what I went with, but uh, very solid. Again, I kind of keep these as square as I can. I clamp these basically just until the gap is totally gone. It makes it look like one piece of plastic, sort of a trick effect. And yeah, that's it. That is our R&M wire looms installed with our already owned, meticulously cleaned Taylor Spyro Pros. So again, stretching my mileage out here. No need to uh, have to spring for new wires if we don't have to. I still have the factory wires in the box. These came in. So for the 5.2, the Survivor, we can throw those on. If we get new wires, I'll probably put them on here and pull them. Whatever. We'll figure something out. But uh, I will probably eventually get to a point where I just buy giant spools of the wire and uh, make my own I've got the crimpers I would just need to be able to source you know like all the ends because these even though they're custom from Taylor you know like there's a lot of times you might be better off with like a 45 degree boot there as opposed to a straight 180 uh, same thing there on the end sometimes you might want a 90 who knows right so that's the perk there but Pay attention to three and five or one and three, however you want to look at this. And it's got these spacers here, which again, the nice thing about this one is it does serve as an insulator, but I don't know that we have to have it because of the pull on these. Now also note, these two wires don't have near the slack that we do on five and seven. So six and eight here are very, very tight. They were our limiting factor lifting it in all honesty here on the passenger side. But I think for continuity's sake, I'm going to take these back out. Again, this is the beauty of dry installed gaskets. You can do this stuff, but I'll just back these out. And assuming we've got clearance here, which I think I will, we'll have the uh, regular bolts. Everything will be uniform. All right. If you don't know what that is in the corner of your screen by the oil fill cap, it's my beloved Stavilla driver. And that means we've got access we've got the standard bolts back in i think it looks a lot better again i'm, I'm not quite sure uh, i looked at some of the let me grab it actually for you i flipped this packaging over and uh when you look at the front side it actually has at least in this application which is probably something from general motors it has the spacers all the way up uh, and it's actually holding the bracket differently um, I guess we could do that I guess we could work this way I don't really know but we're gonna figure it out and uh, the way we've done it actually isn't that bad so we may just run with it but uh, I've got my torque apparatus here for 95 inch pounds we'll get that cinched down I think for all intents and purposes we're done I might before I torque it see kind of like if this actually runs in that manner 
I'm not sure that it would. Um, maybe due to the, the way the valve cover is designed, but we'll play with it and see. So maybe we flip the whole thing and have it installed backwards. I don't know. <laughs> We're going to figure it out. This actually uh, seems pretty pretty legit to me the way we have it, but uh, I don't know. There's kind of a wrench in the slaw here. I sort of was just going by common sense and what I thought would be correct, right? And then there's that so I don't know I'll uh, I'll play around and see what I come up with if I flip the whole thing we flip the whole thing so it, it is what it is but uh, that said this does actually seem to work and I kind of like that it's low profile and just kind of stair steps down you know you sort of more and more discreet as you get to a more and more visible part of the engine particularly on the truck you know where like the cowl covers the whole back third of the block if you will and then this is what people would see so i don't know we'll uh we'll play with it and try to figure something out so i'll be back all right so that is a wrap i think i'm gonna leave it like this um apparently it's upside down but at the same time i don't really aesthetically like mixing you know like an allen screw with hex bolts that's not really my cup of tea uh number two this i've gone around the whole thing it's in part due to the header design and, you know, in part due to how this is holding it, but there's excellent clearance. I mean, typically with headers, I almost always have something touching a tube or super too close. This is like perfect. This is almost like exhaust manifolds, which again, you know, we could probably have a better set of headers, you know, if we were racing or something. But for shorty headers and plug wires, I don't think this is going to be terrible. <laughs> and then coming around here... It's kind of the same thing. I mean, we, this is really the scariest thing, and we just have a little bit of excess there. I mean, I can cable tie that back. I can seat it down like that and just, you know, piano wire these together. Uh, sort of the old stacked cable tie thing. I think it's it works beautifully like this. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking the other thing. I want to leave it like this so I can advance and get the engine dropped in the truck. And then if for some reason R&M does make a Magnum version that, you know, kind of runs out across the five or, you know, farther out or something than the L.A. based engine does. What I would then do is I'd have to take that off anyway on the uh, passenger side again for our coil wire. And if we want to flip it at that point in time, we can. But this is actually pretty good in my opinion. So I think I'm just going to roll with it. <laughs> I mean, they technically don't make anything for the Magnum, even though, you know, it's like the LA stuff fits. So yeah, it's, apparently it's upside down, but I think it, it worked pretty good for me like this. I'm, I'm not going to mess with it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, everything's torqued back down to 95 inch pounds. It looks good. The wire's cleaned up nice. Uh, nothing's touching. Nothing's going to burn. It's better than it was. It's better than it would be with nothing. So I think it's a win. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> Sometimes you do stupid things and they turn out okay. So uh, the other unknown is if I were to take everything apart, flip it, I might hate it. So I don't know. We're just going to go with this because like I said, it, it just checks out. You know, like coming down here, that that looks pretty good in my opinion. Again, I think Taylor has these two a little, little long. That could be for something to do with like a factory provision. Maybe it held it differently. But uh, I'm happy with it, and that's what matters. So just have to figure out the coil wire. And again, I will be hitting up R&M about that, see if they want to make the Magnum-specific ones. Uh, again, apparently they did send me the template out. It just it never got here. So somewhere in a post office or someone's box or something, uh, there is an R&M you know, spark plug wire loom template builder kit that was supposed to go here, so there'd be one for the Magnum. And uh, who knows, maybe they'll just be able to figure out, you know, 4.5 out and kind of come up with something. Or maybe they'll be like, hey, you know, this idiot flipped it and it works pretty good. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, it is like, it's 11.37. That's PM if you were curious. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is probably get inside, check the blazers and nuggets, uh, shower, see the end of the game, and probably come out here early. Want to tackle the torque converter. Uh, and get that seal in this seal right here the one that usually sits on the thermostat and uh, housing freaks people out but yeah uh, I think they are upside down but you know what I like it so we're, we're gonna leave it and just you know go with it 
<laughs> so, like I said, we may change it. I don't know. LoneStarMopars.com is the website. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. Feel free to follow along again. What do you think? I mean, imagine, if you will, if this was flipped. Obviously, flipping it in this case, we would take the passenger side here, put it on the driver's side, so this bracket would stand. Basically, picture it coming up like that. I'm kind of... I'm still thinking this is pretty legit, so I don't know. Wouldn't be a huge difference, it's basically just like a top end aesthetic. And I almost like, I think it's a little bit more discreet this way. And we get to use the factory hardware too, so, uh, or what we had I should say, you know, valve cover hardware, but I'm gonna quit rambling, get inside, get my tools put up. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. So, you know, like I said, you, you work late at night, limited time, and. Sometimes you do stupid things and sometimes they turn out to, to be okay. So we'll roll with that. How about that? Once again, thanks for watching. I hope you have yourself a fantastic week. I'll catch you back here for more action from the shop.